Good day. Greetings from Washington, D.C. It's good to be with you, at least two-dimensionally, and for a few minutes. My name is Mike Dolan, and I'm the Vice President of the Citizens Trade Campaign, the National Fair Trade Coalition that includes organized labor, environmental networks, consumer groups, faith-based activists, and family farmers. I'm also the trade policy lobbyist at the International Brotherhood of Teamsters. And when I'm done speaking to you from this podium in our communications department, I will be climbing back up on Capitol Hill and speaking truth to power in the United States Congress against Fast Track, which Obama and his United States trade representative need to get the Trans-Pacific Partnership and the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership ratified without debate or amendment. This is the big fight over trade policy reform in the U.S. right now, and we're in the thick of it. Anyway, on behalf of our 1.4 million members and our general president, Jim Hoffa, I am honored to be able to address the founding convention, or at least the initial conversation, of the Scotland Says No to the TTIP Coalition. In the beginning were the NAFTA and the GATT, which became the WTO. They begat a brood of trade deals in the same corporate managed model that we have opposed for a generation, sometimes successfully and often unsuccessfully. Examples of NAFTA expansion include numerous bilateral free trade agreements, including recent controversial deals with Colombia, Panama, and Korea as well as multilateral deals like the Central American Free Trade Agreement, or CAFTA. As President Hoffa likes to say, the bosses got the NAFTA and the CAFTA, and the workers got the SHAFTA, which is why many of us in the fair trade movement refer today to the TTIP as the TAFTA for the Transatlantic Free Trade Agreement. Well, and obviously because it rhymes with NAFTA and CAFTA. But I need to be clear at the outset, however, that the Teamsters, like the other affiliates, some of the other affiliates of the CTC, have not yet proclaimed our opposition to the TTIP. The reason is that the negotiations are ongoing and we haven't seen the text yet, which is part of the problem, that lack of transparency, as you doubtless know already. So given the ongoing talks and the big stake that the Teamsters have in the outcome, on behalf of our members in the dairy industry, in the public sector, and in the ports and airports, to name a few of our vested interests. We feel it is premature to declare an irreversible opposition to TAFTA, or the TTIP. I will return to the TTIP in a minute, and specifically what it must include and exclude to enjoy our support. If it fails to meet the high standards of the Teamsters and the CTC, then we will oppose it. Here in DC, on the hill, and in the field. As we have every other trade deal and NAFTA expansion for the last 20 years. Over that time, we have won some important fights, and our experience in those battles for fair trade suggests lessons and tactics that we can use as we engage the corporate and investment elites in the debates about TTIP. For example, in the late 90s, we frustrated the multilateral agreement on investment in the OECD by employing the Dracula strategy, whereby we, whereby we put a, a purloined copy of the MAI online, thereby exposing it to the sunshine of press and public scrutiny, and so, like Dracula, it died. And this was before WikiLeaks. Speaking of WikiLeaks, check it out. The TPP investment chapter is newly exposed. We should expect similar leaks of controversial chapters of the TTIP. Anyway, after it was exposed, communities all over the country passed MAI free zone resolutions, which is happening again with the Fast Track and the TPP in cities like Seattle, the most trade dependent city in the country, as its congressional delegation never tires of telling us. Speaking of Seattle, that's another example. Frustrating the WTO in the streets in 1999 taught us several lessons, including the importance of direct action, non-violent civil disobedience, as part and parcel of our militant opposition to corporate globalization. For the organizers, we learned valuable lessons from that historic mobilization, that movement of movements, young anarchists risking arrest alongside old labor leaders, 
And the blending of their complementary organizing traditions, lateral consensus process on the one hand, and on the other, the vertical and hierarchical accountability of the labor movement and other mainstream civil society groups. Last example, beating fast track for Clinton and the consequent failure of the FTAA demonstrated the importance of populist rejection of free trade from the left and the right. Our strange bedfellows who shared a critique of NAFTA and especially the broken promises that Clinton and the corporate apologists had made. That rough alliance exists still as another second term Democratic president and another dysfunctional Republican leadership try to build a majority for fast track and more NAFTA expansion. So let me conclude with a couple of points about the TTIP and then let you get back to your conversation and the historic birth of the Scottish coalition that says no to it. Like you, first, we oppose ISDS and the TTIP for the same righteous reasons that animate civil society networks here and there and around the world. Frankly, you have a better chance of keeping the corporate courts out of TTIP than we do. And further, I think you're going to do it linked with all the other anti-TTIP networks over there and prevail on the parliament and the commission to abandon ISDS. We may very well bring the whole TTIP down with ISDS, so stay tuned, I guess. Next, labor rights. The natural core concern for trade unionists like me must be incorporated into the text and enforceable by the same trade sanctions that protect commercial interests. But that's boilerplate, as we say. TTIP is different from our other trade deals because you in Europe often have greater rights and wage rates than your brothers and sisters over here. I mean, hell, you all even got what, European worker councils and some of us over here would like to achieve that in our labor laws. The point is that we demand upward harmonization of standards and not just in the labor chapter or, or sustainability, but across the board all issues affecting all consumers and working families. I imagine we agree on that, that in these TTIP talks, whenever there is asymmetry between US and EU standards, the negotiators must err on the upside. What else? Public sector off the table in the services negotiations. In general, we prefer the positive list approach of the EU side as, uh, as to covered services industries. Mm, and I think we can agree to disagree about cheese names and whether Crowdy or Dunlop or Swinzy, which are Scottish cheese names, don't you know, should be protected under a system of geographic indications that would reduce the global market share of some of the Teamsters dairy employers. Perhaps something to think about from a TTIP monkey wrenching perspective. Enough already. Obviously, I wish I could join your conversation, take some questions arising from my brief comments, and strategize and organize with you to fix or nix the TTIP. Finally, leave you with an old Alinsky axiom that I have lived by since I was trained by the farm workers back in California. A good organizer is a social arsonist who goes around setting people on fire.